Here is uh, the master of the upper body tilt, which is another aspect of what we saw in the older players. We also see in the young players is Danny Wiseman. I'm going to put him up here live here so you'll see him. Let's go to him now because he's my poster boy for the upper body tilt. That's also a good thing to do. Let me find him here. There he is. Okay, so here's Danny. And right now, his body is pretty vertical. If I put a line down the torso here, it's pretty straight up and down, isn't it? Now, as he goes in the swing, watch what happens. As the ball actually goes into the swing right here, notice his body is tilting. So now it's over at an angle quite a few degrees different than we just saw. And that angle he maintains throughout the delivery. It will not change. Watch. See, it's still there now. It's still there now. Notice the balance arm comes out front with a thumb down. I called that airplane wings when I was a kid, about five. I wanted to be a pilot. I used to fly around the neighborhood with my arms spread out like an airplane wing. And that's how most good bowlers play now. They have the balance arm out front low in line with the bowling arm, like you see here. I call that airplane wings. But notice the head and the ball stay lined up through the whole event. The head and the ball are lined up in the stance and the setup. He's kind of like Jason Couch. He has it almost in the center of his body, doesn't he? And then as he tilts over, his head stays in line with the ball as the ball goes in the swing. You see that? Right now the head and the ball are lined up, aren't they? Just yeah, it just misses. You want that ball to be very close to your leg there. And the backswing, the head and the ball are lined up here, aren't they? Yeah. And at the finish, notice his back angle. That new angle is still being maintained here, isn't it? Almost identically. Hardly any variation at all. And from the top of the swing through the finish, look how steady his head is. Watch this. His head is rock solid. See that? Not any movement hardly at all. And the follow through, just like Chris Barnes, right through the face. You see that? Talk to the hand now, not answer the phone. But at the finish point, at the release right here, if I draw a line down from his chin, right here, straight down, the ball is inside that line, isn't it? Most amateurs have the ball outside that line. That's right. So there's one way to tell an amateur from a top player right away. Is the ball inside the chin line at release or is it outside the chin line at release? When you coach at home, you can look for that and see and almost tell right away who's going to be a good player or who's got the skills developed and how. And if they don't, you need to develop those skills. Get that ball in. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So all the top players have that characteristic of the ball being, some of them may not be completely inside the line, but the majority of the ball is inside the line. Okay. I think Chris is maybe about three fourths of the ball inside that line. Okay. There you see the finish. Now he's got his trail leg up in the air, but otherwise right here, he looks just like the guys in the fifties and sixties. Doesn't he? Yeah. Very same. Very similar. Very similar. Okay. So that's what I wanted you to see there. And these slides we're going to go back to here will show you that from the front and from the back, the head and the ball maintain that relationship. And that shoulder, the upper body tilt of the torso to the right stays that way all the way through his delivery. And we'll go to some shots here. Here's a sequence from almost the start of a swing through the release. And here's a sequence from the back showing the same thing. Okay. So the next thing we do is the hinge maneuver. Instead of pushing the ball all the way out to fully extended arm and then drop it in the swing, we kind of round it into the swing uh, with a hinge maneuver. We call it the hinge, where the elbow comes to the front of the pelvis, and then the elbow joint, which is a hinge joint, just unlatches. Okay? So it's, uh, I equate it to looking at a locomotive and the old pictures of locomotives, but aren't too many of them around anymore on TV, where you see the two big wheels turning, there's a connecting rod going in between, going like this. And that connecting rod move is the kind of the move of the hinge. It goes forward a little bit, but then it goes round and down. Forward, round and down. Forward, round and down. Not fully extended, yes, in this case, in bowling. So here's Tommy Jones and Walter Ray doing that. And you see their arm never becomes fully extended. It remains a little bit bent until they get to the very bottom or the most vertical point of the swing when their ball is right down lowest to the lane. Okay? So that's the 
purpose of these two slides is to show you that their arm never gets fully extended straight out in front of them. And most bowlers I see that have been taught that way go way too far out in front. And then that also engages their back muscles again. The ball becomes very heavy. They have to tighten their back muscles to hold it that far away from their body. Yes. Here's Tommy doing it through the whole series. Notice his elbow stays at the front of the pelvis. Unfortunately, we can't see his upper arm because of this black shirt and the long sleeve on it. But as it comes down, then at the vertical point, his arm is fully extended here, you see at the very bottom point of the swing. But until then it's partially bent and it's kind of a front to the pelvis and then a rounded and down motion. And this gives you less hand pressure in the start of the swing, less body tension, especially the lower back. It'll make you have quicker feet, which we think is a good thing. I fought that for many years because slow feet allow you to control everything and I'm a control freak. So I love slow feet. And uh, but Bob Learn Jr. and Norm Duke taught me that fast feet are better because it frees up my swing and I, don't, I didn't like that because I wanted to control my swing every bit of the way yeah oh yeah yeah it feels horrible and, and you feel like you're losing all control which is exactly what happens but it creates more accuracy and better timing and uh, up, and we'll do it maybe within you know we'll modify it uh, where you can feel reasonably comfortable doing it but any change we make today is going to feel silly uncomfortable oh, yeah. until you get into it. And we say it takes about a thousand shots to get fully integrated okay. into a new change, okay? But that's one of the things we, we the, the hinge will do. will cause you to have quicker feet. And I don't want you to try to speed your feet up, but just let your feet. Give them permission to go faster if they want to. That's what I try to tell people. Don't try to force it to go faster, but just say, if your feet want to go faster, if they feel the need to go faster, it's okay. Let them do that. You know, let your feet accommodate to whatever they want to. Because when your swing gets in the swing a little earlier, you're going to feel like you've got to catch up with it a little bit by going faster with your feet. And let that process happen, and maybe it'll feel better than you think. The hinge helps promote good timing and fluidity, and fluidity is another key word. Into, it's a synonym with being smooth, in my opinion. Balance arm, we encourage it to stay out front after it helps guide the ball into the swing. And the best way to do that, when I first started doing the stay in front, I used to be a point-to-the-wall guy because that's how I was taught. I was like stiff-arming football players. My arm was rigid and fully extended and stiff, and it felt horrible. Once I learned to relax it from the elbow to the wrist, it started feeling pretty darn good, and I, now I love it. But at first it was a nightmare change because I was like really stiff. So Chris Barnes, you see here, he just leaves it hanging in front, and you see the little bend in his elbow. It's definitely just hanging there. It's not like he's trying to block somebody. And that's the key to doing it well. There he is out again from the side. You see a little bend in that arm. And it's usually in a, a straight line communicating with the bowling arm, like the airplane wings I told you about. And Tommy's going about maybe at 45 degrees to the side here, but it's still a little bit out in front, not all the way to the side. So different players do it differently. I like it more out in front. Tommy likes the 45. You might like something in between. Who knows? Walter Ray, top left. Norm Duke, top right. Chris, bottom left. Sean Rash, bottom right. Different back tilts. Walter and Norm have almost a 90 degree back tilt, don't they? They're almost flat. Where, where Chris and Sean are more 40, 45 degrees, maybe even less. And Chris and Sean have their balance arms way out front, and Norm and Walter have their balance arms more to the side. Walter actually still points to the wall. Yeah, I don't think they have as much. Their shoulders don't open as much on there. Exactly. They don't rotate their shoulders. Norm does a little bit more than, than Walter. That's why his arm is more out front. But they all do the step over. And uh, the key here is the swing and the slide happen together. As the slide foot starts forward, the swing is coming forward and the head stays steady in that blue box that you see up here. All four of them maintain a very steady head, which is another key component of the top players. Steady head from top of the swing through the finish. Let me show you that with Chris Barnes right now. We'll bring up another player, view of him, another action photo. Now Chris is going to be in, the, in motion already here. But watch him, watch the head from the top of the swing in that green box. See how steady it is there? 
So right here, as he starts coming down, balance arm is out front, the swing's at the top of the swing. And look how he stretches. Look at the stretch here. Look at that. Yeah. It's almost like a baseball pitcher, isn't it? it is. How they it kick up and stretch. Like he's really yeah. He's got tremendous separation between his two feet. Tremendous separation here. And that's where the power in bowling comes. That's why these red arrows are drawn up here. The power is coming from the lower body and the core, not the upper body and the arm. A lot of people want to throw the ball with the arm, and you'll see a lot of house bowlers are averaging 230 in the house shot using their upper body, but they can get away with it because the house shot's very forgiving. On the tour, you've got to throw it from the legs and the core, at least I believe you do, to be successful. And here, at the release point right now, I put a blue line in front of his shin here, his, fore, his leg. And after the ball's off his hand, which it is right now, watch the continuation of the knee. How uh, it still goes forward and over the foul line, actually. So his whole body, yeah, that whole body is mo going with tremendous momentum from the lower body. And the lower body just keeps on going after the ball is off the hand. It just keeps moving forward. So all the energy is trying to be transferred down the lane. And you talked about throwing the ball down to the lane. We don't want to be going up. We want to be going down the lane because that's where the ball is going to go. So you want to be a very efficient machine to transfer energy from your body to the ball, all of it going into the lane, all of it going that way rather than up or sideways. And you see a lot of people transferring energy everywhere else but down the lane. They're losing a lot of energy that way. They're not being efficient, I think. So Chris is a very efficient player. He gets all the energy transferred into the ball. Steady head from the top of the swing through the release. Gives you great leverage, great ball motion and builds your accuracy and consistency, which you have a lot of already. And again, this shows the relationship with the head and the ball at the top of the swing. Notice that they're all together here on that, aren't they? Even Walter Ray, even though his arm is pointed to the wall, all are consistent. Sean Rash and Chris, very similar. Airplane wings, head and the ball pretty well lined up. A little different angles, but pretty close. And at the finish, they're all like the old timers I showed you, aren't they? Yeah. Shoulders are way dropped down. Now it's about 135, 140 degrees of shoulder tilt. Way down there. The ball is real close to the ankle, inside the chin. inside the chin line you see here for both these guys. The ball, not like Danny, the, the ball's not totally inside there, but it's darn close to being the majority of it, yeah, three-fourths to two-thirds. So the slide foot is a summary parallel to the launch angle, hand behind the ball. The way to keep the hand behind the ball is keep the elbow in. Yeah, it, the only way it can happen. As soon as the elbow moves out, the hand moves around the side of the ball. The wrist unloads at the bottom like throwing a yo-yo. That's the new release nowadays, okay? Instead of the opposite of that, loading up at the release. The ball is under the head. The right shoulder drops way under. The forearm faces forward still, and then you can rotate with your hand, but the forearm, the cup of the elbow, still faces forward. Johnny Petraglia still teaches that. Point the cup of your elbow at the target, and then just rotate your hand, okay? Left arm is cleared out of the way. The trunk of the body tilts way to the right. We saw that with Danny Weissman. And here you see with Tommy Jones, trunk is tilted way. The head gets way outside the center of gravity, way outside. And the right leg and right hip clear because the ball is going to come through right where the right leg and hip were at. That's where the ball is going to come swinging through. Okay? Any questions? That's what we're going to do next. <laughs> all right. And you see the follow through on all four of these guys. Now, two of them have their tray legs down, two of them have their tray legs up. But otherwise, they look very similar, don't they? I went from up to down. Yeah. Yeah, I prefer down, but I, I'm not telling Walter Ray and Jason Cass they got to change, you know. Yeah. Or Tommy Jones. Okay, that's pretty much it. Let's stop here.